an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching. To help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life. Through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM certified wellness coach. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie. Winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we're going to talk about atherosclerosis. And that is the building up of plaque. And we're going to talk about different types of plaque buildup in different arteries and what that can mean. But I want to start this with it, it kind of like a, a debate that has come up where sometimes people I've heard where you talk about the concerns about the LDL cholesterol uh, and the HDL cholesterol. And HDL is supposed to be good and LDL is supposed to be bad. And some people out there are saying, well, you know, LDLs aren't the issue. Inflammation is the issue. And other people go, inflammation isn't as much the issue. It's the fact that there are the LDLs in the bloodstream that are causing this plaque buildup. Uh, and so I want to kind of discuss this. Is it inflammation or is it cholesterol? Uh, and, and listen, the short answer is it's both. But I want to discuss this primarily from where I research it from, which is coming from uh, diabetes. Now, these things can take place out clearly outside of diabetes. So the concern about those with diabetes is that diabetes isn't bad because there's sugar in the blood. It's bad because what it does to the blood vessels when it's in the blood. So it is the effect that sugars have on your vascular system. So let's talk about a few things going forward here. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, this term atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis is the firming of large and medium-sized artery walls. There's also arteriosclerosis, which is the buildup of plaque. And there, there's arteriolosclerosis, mm -hmm, and that's the firming of the small artery walls. So if you look at the inside of an artery, there the very inside uh, layer of tissue is called the endothelium. And the endothelium is able to uptake insulin or uptake glucose without insulin. Now, insulin is something that we use to get blood, uh, to get sugar out of our bloodstream and into our muscles. And if it stays in the bloodstream, it starts to build up and the endothelium, the inside lining of your blood vessel starts to take up the glycogen or the glucose. And the glycogen is the stored form of glucose. So endothelium cells produce a little bit of byproducts, kind of like in inflammatory cytokines when that happens. So the endothelial cells form a barrier between the vessel and the tissue on the outside of the vessel and they control the flow of substances and fluid in and out of tissues. So if there's any impaired function, that leads to some serious health issues throughout the body. And uh, Butch and Cannon et al. says the endothelial cells line blood vessels and lymphatic vessels, and they are found exclusively in vascularized tissue. And so we look at the effect that uh, inflammation is going to have and I know we're talking about uh, glucose, but now we're going to get into the, the LDLs and the concern that happens here. So what goes on in the body is that once the endothelial starts taking up uh, glucose, it produces something called reactive oxygen species or ROS. And that is a byproduct, the reactive oxygen species. And that leads to a whole slew of other things, things like advanced glycolated end products or AGEs. And your body 
has enzymes to get rid of this. But when too much occurs, it has a hard time keeping up. And, and health and, and, the, and your fitness levels can actually help with the, the clearance of the advanced glycolated end products. But one way uh, that has something to do with it is first of all, like how we prep food, uh, especially high temperature cooking and things like burning food, overly toasting, overly cooking, burning, uh, when that doesn't matter, it can be barbecue or grilling or roasting or baking or frying or sauteing or broiling or searing or toasting. If you over toast your bread, I know that I like that. I'm, I'm the dad. My kids don't eat the overly toasted toast. So I'm like, I can't let that go to waste and I'll eat it. But I know also don't do it very often because smoke, especially things like smoked food, we know this about smoking in general, is it's not good for you. There are a lot of carcinogens. Well, then it doesn't matter where that smoke is coming from. Anything, like if you overly cook your food, high temperature cooking and burning. So those reactive oxygen species can increase something called your protein kinase C activity. And that can lead to angiogenesis. It can lead to cell growth and platelet aggregation. And so then you start to get all of these other inflammatory mediators, and that leads to the dilation of the endothelial. So what that means, if you have dilation, it starts to open up. So as they open up, the endothelial cells, which are just thousands and thousands of cells that line up against each other, they're touching each other. And as it dilates, it creates space between each one of those cells. And as it creates space, it allows very, very small things to exit the inside of the cell and move into the tissue of the artery. And some of those things have to be really small, things like uh, monocytes. And they pass through the lumen. And then once they pass into the lumen, they turn into something called macrophages. I know we're getting deep into the weeds here, but stay with me. A macrophage uh, is a big eater. Macro is big, phage is eating. So it's a big eater. And they are really good at going in and clearing out debris. You have dead cells, goes in and clears it out. You have um, a splinter stuck in your finger. Those cells go in there and they try to eat away at it until it, it basically goes away. So it's trying to clear out. Same thing with pathogens. So whether you get bacteria or viruses or fungus, the macrophage likes to go in and consume it. And when it does that, it kind of clears things out. But stay with me. One of the other things that can get through the dilated tissue in that area, and the reason it's dilated is because these inflammatory mediators have started to increase in that area, and it leads to dilation. So as it dilates, the low-density lipoprotein, the very small-density cholesterol, can get through those little cracks can get through those little holes, can get through the space in the endothelium. And as they get into the space, the macrophages look at the LDLs and they go, oh, that's not good. This isn't supposed to be here. And it consumes those cells, all right? So this is this is the interesting part, right? So I've got, I've got LDLs and I also have inflammation. Inflammation is the sending of those monocytes to clear out what's going on. Well, what's going on is that we have a buildup of cholesterol. So the macrophage eats those cells, and because it's a fatty cell, it eats it, and it can't really get rid of it, and it turns into something called a foam cell. And once it eats it and it creates a foam cell, all sorts of inflammatory cytokines start to be released. So there's, uh, there are these interleukins and just in numerous uh, 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 inflammatory mediators start to be produced. And the foam cell starts to secrete growth factor. And that growth factor leads to the smooth muscle of the inside of the, the tunica media, which is the, the space between the outside of the artery and the endothelial. And it starts to proliferate. They, those cells start to proliferate and they get more and more and the increased foam cells, they start to build up and they like to stick together. So they aggregate and then they bind together inside the tunica media. And 
then the lipids, the inflammatory mediators, they start to release these growth factors and these growth factors lead to plaque. Plaques lead to damage of both the microvascular and the macrovascular system. So what happens here? It is a combination of LDL and inflammation that lead to these, these blockages in the arteries and these blockages in the blood vessels in general. And here's what happens. All of these things, the increased AEGs, the increased ROSs, the protein kinase C, um, the, the, the inflammatory mediators that are released, they create a toxic diabetic metabolism, but even if you don't have diabetes, uh, it leads to endothelial dysfunction and vascular inflammation. And the thing is when additional vascular inflammation starts to happen and the dilation takes place, the LDLs continue to go through, the macrophages eat them, they foam cell, they bind to each other, they burst after binding and they create all sorts of inflammatory mediators and it happens again. That leads to microvascular and macro, macrovascular disease. This is where the issues come in. So is it inflammation or is it cholesterol? The answer is it's both. We're looking at both of these issues being what leads to atherosclerosis, the scarring inside of our arteries. And so, Rick, what do we do about it? Well, I think one of the great things that we can do as fitness professionals is exercise. Exercise is known to be beneficial for uh, our ability to increase our HDLs, which clear out some of the LDLs from our bloodstream. It minimizes inflammation. It, it, it has short-term inflammatory processes where ROSs and AEGs can still be produced through exercise. And then after that, it has this amazing anti-inflammatory effect. So working out with weights, resistance training, cardiorespiratory training, all vitally important. And now that goes just for the heart disease and the vascular disease. It is also those two things, resistance training and cardiovascular training are also very, very important for diabetes, not just heart disease because of its effect on our metabolism, on our insulin sensitivity, and even our ability to produce greater amounts of insulin, not just the sensitivity that we have to insulin. So inflammation or cholesterol, what causes plaque buildup? It is both and how they create the foam cells and those foam cells build within the arterial walls. Not, it doesn't build inside the artery where the blood flows, it's inside the wall of the artery between the endothelial and the other tissue that the, the arteries are made from. So with that said, when we look at this as being a debate, I don't think it is. I don't think that you just say, oh, it is, it is LDLs. It's not. It's inflammation. Well, it's not just inflammation. It is also LDL. So there is uh, paying attention to what we eat the foods that we consume, but also our systemic inflammation. And what we can do to control that is we can promote physical activity, movement, and a movement lifestyle. Doing what you can, not what you can't. Get up, get active. And that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But um, you know, minimizing your sitting and reclining and spending more time standing up, more time moving throughout the day. Hope you found this helpful. Share this with your friends, family, uh, like, subscribe, and keep inspiring people to fitness. If you want to reach out to me, you can do so. You can hit me up on email, rick.richie at nasm.org, or you can hit me up on Instagram, DM me at dr.rickrichie. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.